This goes to Ariel Soto. We need something to stir us up this morning. Find something to stir us up. Okay. Find something to stir us up. My wife is coming. Let's stir it up. Say you love Jesus. All right, come on. She says, say you love Jesus. We're talking about, do you love Jesus? He says that if you love me, keep my commandments. Come on, honey. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We try to do this, say you love Jesus. If you know the song, sing along with us. Amen. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Uh-huh. If you love Jesus, you are the chosen side. If you love Jesus, you are the chosen side. You should stand up. You should testify. Come on. You said for God I live. And for God, I will surely die. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Uh-huh. If you love Jesus, you are chosen some sad. Can you love the Lord Come on then. and say you hate your friend? Come to church to serve the Lord. You sit mm -hmm. there and won't even say amen. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Uh huh. If you love Jesus, you will show some sad. Talk about me, laugh at me when I shout. There's one thing for sure. I know what I'm really shouting about. Say you love Jesus, yeah. Say you love Jesus. Say you love Jesus. Uh-huh. If you love Jesus, you are the chosen sign. This morning comes out of the epistle of James, 5th chapter, verses 13 through 16. The epistle of James, the 5th chapter, verses 13 through 16. James, 5th chapter, verses 13 through 16. You're fine to say amen. James. James, 5th chapter. 5th chapter. Verses 13 through 16. Amen. A scripture reads, If any among you afflicted, let him pray. If any marry, let him sing psalms. If any sick among you, let him call the elders of the church and let him pray. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. Confess your sins one to another mm -hmm. and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Mm -hmm. And the effectual prayer 
of a righteous man availeth much. Right. Let the Lord, let the household of faith say amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing amen. of his holy and his righteous yeah. word. You know, I've heard many complaints as a pastor and a minister about and a deacon, might as well say it, about who didn't pray over them, who didn't come visit me, who didn't come pray, and who didn't... We, we get caught up into who came to pray for us as though the entire process is dependent upon me coming to pray for you. All right, preacher. But it says in Genesis 1 that, mm -hmm. that the Word of God says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, he did. And I was thinking about that. God did all that without a prayer from me, without a prayer he from did. you, without <laughs> a prayer in it. Well, then tell the truth, won't nobody else around him. See, so why? Why? Because what? He can, eh? Yeah. God don't need me to pray for him to accomplish what he did. Come on, but man. So, the power of prayer is good, yeah. but God got the power and authority to perform <laughs> whatever he wills without human intervention. That's it's up. good for us to be there, but God don't need us. We need him. Yeah. Jesus taught us uh, that the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, even in our prayer for asking, we should pray to God that his will be done in our life, that his will be the center of our life. I want what God's will is for my life, not just what I want Amen. for my own personal Amen. need. Amen. So my point is, God can do, but it's up to me and you to be part of the process and, 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 and to, to, to get this thing done. We need to be a faithful participant yes. in the process of getting what God has for us in our life. Amen. Instead of waiting around for your miracle to happen, you need to be able to get some things kicked off in your own personal Amen. life. So naturally, if you're sick, verse 7, does the doctor mm -hmm. or the hospital come by to see you, does it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever got sick? Did the doctor call you and say, are you sick? Huh? So, if the doctor don't call you, why God got to call you? Come on, preacher. You need to call what? You need to call him, man. Jesus. See, the thing is, you and whoever cares for you must have the option to move and to get you some help and call somebody, somebody. if you need some help. Yeah. See, I'm one of those that has the, mm. I got to be almost dead before I go to the hospital, yeah. before I go to the doctor. Thing got to happen, but thank God my wife yeah. or that, that will get me to a doctor if I need, because I'm hard-headed and I won't. See, God got to knock me sometime on my back in yeah. order for me to get enough sense to be able to breathe. See, the thing is, when he take your app, mm. You got to do something, ain't it? Yeah. You got to do something when you take your ability to breathe. Uh -huh. See, folk do all kinds of foolish stuff to take their own lives. Have you ever noticed? Uh -huh. Folk, they might, they might, have you ever noticed that nobody took their life by holding a breath? <laughs> See, there is something down on the inside, inside of us that will initiate us to breathe. breathe. When we need to breathe. So there's a desire for us to live on the inside of us. Your body yearns to live. And, and if you got to go to the doctor, you got to let somebody know if you're closed in your right mind. On, that you must be the initiator mm -hmm. of this thing to be able to get healed, to get delivered, or to get released, or have your desires be fulfilled in your life. Jesus never healed anybody without the one in need or somebody that loved them that was brought them to him. Mm -hmm. he, they brought the crabs to him. The crabs came to him. The, the, the men brought their sick to him. People <laughs> brought sick to Jesus. So Jesus didn't run around and start looking for sick people. Mm -hmm. People that saw a need. So Jesus looks at you have the need and the desire to find me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. But you got to look for me. Yep. See, your miracle ain't coming for you. Your miracle ain't coming for you. And, and the, if you ain't praying, and, and if you ain't believing, and if you ain't calling somebody faithfully to pray for you, but you must do a heart check, ain't it? Come on. 
to make room for the healer to come in. Ain't come you, yeah. How he going to come in and heal you when your heart don't leave no room for him? Right. See, don't lay around wallowing in your sickness and, and, and to make so that, that 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 you can be sick and afflicted and and and, and living in, in in poverty all while you could be enjoying the blessings of God. Amen. See, Jesus uh, walking past a man laying at the sheep gate one day, and the man was impotent from birth, and 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 Jesus just asked him a question: Will thou be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? That's what Jesus asked him. The impotent man said, sir, I ain't got nobody that when the water is troubled to help me into the water. Mm -hmm. So th this man, that, see, folk will let you die, won't they? Yeah. Folk will let you die waiting on your miracle. He said he sat there waiting on the miracle, but nobody helped him in. So he waiting on his miracle. Folk will let you die waiting on I don't care what shape you in. You can't put forth some effort to get your miracle done in your life. You might not have all the strength, but at least you can wait. If I can't say a word, I'm going to wave my hand, ain't it? If I can't say, see, thing is, you need to do something, something to be an initiator of your miracle. See, God will do his part of planting the seed that will help you to get your harvest. But the thing about it is, you got to do some cultivating. Yeah. See, God got a blessing with your name on it, yes, but you have. must have the gumption to get up. Yes, you got to be able to get up. You got to take what... Take up your bed like this man was doing. And then you got to be able to walk away from your situation that God has given you a chance to get out of. See, don't lie around <laughs> waiting for your miracle <laughs> when you can be an initiator. <laughs> and this is not a moral of this story. See, but you need to, you can believe in a miracle, but if you don't get up and take action, that your miracle never become to fruition. No. No. I pray and ask God for business. But if you don't get up and start your business, the business ain't going to start on its own. Mm -hmm. You've got to be an initiator. I, I like that. My wife knows I like the old Gold Rush. I like the Gold Rush show. And when the first Gold Rush came on, old Pop said that all of us can be me now. You just got to get it out of the ground. <laughs> See, all of us got a blessing with our name on it, but you got to be the initiator. Yeah. You got to trust and believe God is able. Yes, and then yeah. some, you got to get up and get up off the ground. Wake up and get up and then take up and walk away with what God has in store for you. Amen. To claim the miracle that God has with your name on it. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I, I'm going to ask the question, are you waiting for your miracle. Are you waiting for your miracle? Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this mm. moment. We thank God for this opportunity. We ask now mm. that you just touch your lips of your dear servant. Touch my lips that I might boldly say those things you have laid upon my heart. Lord, touch my mind and my heart that I might be right for thee, O oh Lord, that I might be the proper ground that you might be able to sow into to be able to reap the harvest of words of encouragement to those that you have set up under us. Lord, we thank you and amen. praise you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. amen. Are you waiting for your miracle? I like this song by the Clark sister says, they are looking for a miracle. They're expecting the impossible. They feel the intangible. They see the invisible. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. The sky is the limit to what I can have. I can believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Mm -hmm. See, I want to let you know this morning that both looking and waiting are components to how and when the miracle that God has for you will happen in your life. Mm -hmm. I've learned that looking without waiting and waiting without looking can be just as fruitless when it comes to you trying to reach and to achieve your miracle. Are you with me this morning? Mm -hmm. See, either way, you're going to get caught between, as the Bible says, between two opinions. To allow your miracle to happen, you got to be able to look with expectation, looking without expectation, and then waiting without patience will get you the same lack of a harvest. Amen. You don't, you got to be able to look with expectation, Amen. and then you got to be able to wait 
with the patience Amen. that God has so that you can receive what you want. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm not just waiting for my miracle. Right. I'm looking, I'm expecting, I am feeling, mm -hmm. I'm seeing the unlimited miracle that God has for me this morning. Amen. So you need to give God some praise this morning. Yeah. So he's got a blessing this morning with your name on it. Huh? Name on it. He's got your blessing with your name on it. Name on it. Papa saying this patience is virtue. Huh? It is a virtue. But the thing about it is patience is something that it takes a long time for us to achieve. Amen. See, so what exactly is the meaning of patience? Well, patience is most commonly is the capacity to tolerate. See, most of us, we can't tolerate anything, especially the ability to tolerate delay. See, mm -hmm. trouble and suffering without getting angry or getting upset. See, in other words, patience is essentially waiting with what? Grace. Yeah. See, part of being a Christian is the ability uh, to accept yeah. unfortunate yeah. circumstances gracefully while having faith that God will ultimately resolve your situation. Amen. So what is virtue and why is it so important? Mm -hmm. See, virtue is synonymous of having uh, some, some uh, noble character. See, it simply means that you have a quality or a practice of moral excellence and one that central tenets is your Christianity. Mm -hmm. See, being virtuous is essentially is enjoying a wholesome life and building healthy relationships. If patience is a virtue, then waiting is the best and often most unpleasant means in which the Holy Spirit grows patience in you. Amen. See, by our culture, does not value patience in the same way that God does. We, why be patient? Why do you want to be patient? Instant gratification is what the world is today, ain't it? We don't want to be patient and waiting for what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. We want it right now and right now. See, our increasing ability uh, to instantly satisfy our wants may be taken away from the blessing or learning how to wait well. So how do you wait well anyway? How do you wait well? So here are six reasons how that we can learn how to wait well. See, one right. thing is that to wait well for your sanity and your sanctification, then ultimately the glory of God's blessings in your life. So patience means waiting quietly. Mm. Huh? The Bible tells us in Lamentations 3 and 25 and 26 that the Lord is good to those that wait for him and the souls of who seek him. It is good for one to wait quietly uh, for the salvation of the Lord. Then number two, patience means waiting eagerly. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28 says that, And a just and is appointed a man wants to die, but after that comes the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear the second time, not to deal with the sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Mm -hmm. So we got to be eagerly. Remember I said we got to be living with expectation. Eagerly waiting for him. And then patience means waiting until the end. Huh? Hebrews 6 and 15 says that and so after waiting patiently Abraham received what was promised. See God got a promise but if you ain't willing to wait eagerly or wait till the end to receive your promise, your promise may be on. See, somebody got your promise with your name on it. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't what? Patient. Patiently. Waiting until the end to receive. And then patience means waiting expectantly. Maybe you had had a legitimate God-given vision of success like Abraham, but life took a, 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 a bad turn and, and the promise looks like it will never going to happen in your life. David says in Psalm 5 and 3, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice in the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. And then patience, number five, patience means waiting what? Joyfully. James 
tells us in 1, 2, and 4, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face the trials of many kinds because you know that your test and your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that it may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. See, sometimes our character has deep flaws that, it, that we can't see right now, but what God did, he sees through all of that. He sees through all of that. And, and then he understands that we have to sometimes wait joyfully for the things that God. See, he won't ignore our hardship. Gently, persistently, he prods us, helping us to see our sin. He patiently waits for us, even when it's not patiently for him. But won't life be easier if we listen and obey him the first time? Man. See, things will be a whole lot better if we just got it the first time. Yep. But a whole lot of time, we just don't get it, do we? Mm -hmm. Patience means waiting with grace for yourself. Huh? That's all much easier said than done, ain't it? Yes, sir. Huh? Waiting with patience is not easy, and mm -hmm. only God knows this. Mm -hmm. The good news is that you don't have to wait alone. Mm -hmm. huh? Romans 8, 2, and 26, uh, it says that if hope and that we uh, do not have yet, we wait patiently for it. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us and through wordless groans. So here he's saying that, that we can graciously wait for it because God, what you don't know what to ask for, God will ask for it for you. Amen. Huh? He says that you don't know what you ask for, but he will ask for it. Then number seven, patience the one thing that we shouldn't wait for. You need to wait for everything else, but don't wait for patience. <laughs> See, there are many things worth waiting for and many things that we should learn to be more patient about, but there is one thing that you should definitely not postpone for the second time that's actually acknowledging who Jesus Christ is in your life. Don't patiently wait to accept him as your Lord and Savior. We have no idea when the time is going to come that he's going to come to receive us. But we could be tomorrow. It could be today. Paul said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. If you haven't acknowledged him, don't wait. Don't patiently wait to accept him. Accept him today. He said, now is the day of salvation. So have patience for everything. Except for waiting on, don't, 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 don't wait to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. So here, we have to learn how to wait patiently. How do you learn to wait well patiently? But as we look at our text today, James is trying to tell us that there are some things that, that are worth waiting for. Mm -hmm. But your spiritual and physical and emotional and mental and economical and every area of your life demands us to move mm -hmm. on our faith rather than wait on it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it's a thin line. When do you move and when do you hold? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a time to hold it, there's a time to fold them. So when do you hold them and when do you fold them? So it's got to be a thin line. But the author tells us in James 4, said, yet you have not because you ask not. And yet when you receive not, because when you ask amiss, that you may consume it on your own lust. Mm -hmm. See, praying for vital communication between you and God to, is one of the things that we need to pray for. God, I need to know how to pray in your will. Mm -hmm. I need to know how to pray in your, your, your purpose for my life. Because mm -hmm. we pray for my purpose. I'm asking for all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. But Lord, I need to know to how do I pray to, so that your will can be done in my life. Mm -hmm. See, waiting for somebody to pray for you sometimes it's senseless because they don't know your desires. Mm -hmm. They don't know what you stand in the need of. If you know the Lord, what does my praying have over your praying? Mm -hmm. What does your praying have over my praying mm -hmm. if both of us know the Lord? Mm -hmm. He says that you have not because of who prayed. Mm -hmm. You have not because you ask not. See, our praying should be praying unto God. See, Jesus is my connection, ain't it? He, he connects to me just as well as he connects to you. Mm -hmm. So the same connection, our prayer is not because of who doing the praying. The prayer is the connection. Yeah. We got the connection with God. See, Jesus is my connection, and if Jesus is your connection, so what makes your request 
stronger than my request, and my request stronger than your request, when I know what my needs are. Yes. And I'm the one that's being measured by the faith mm. that is needed in order for the prayer to be answered. Yes. God is waiting for the faith mm -hmm. along with the prayer. The request got to be faithfully spoken and be faithfully believed that God is the one that can answer it. Amen. So when I pray, I pray for my desire and my request and my faith is how God answers that prayer. All right. Somebody's faith got to be measured for God, God to answer the prayer. Amen. You know, yes, he can heal whether he wants to or not. But the thing is, your request got to be known. Amen. Philippians 4, 6 and 8 said, be careful for nothing, but in everything. Amen. By prayer and supplication yes. with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your mind and your heart through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, finally, whatever things are what? Pure, true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, a report. If there be any virtue, if there in be any praise, he said, think on these things. Your prayer has to be on the mind of things that God has in his heart. You have to have a mindset like God. Someone else's prayer may not have my request in mind. Eh? So somebody else's prayer just not back. And then that level of faith, is, is, I'm asking, so it's got to be my faith level. Yes. Eh? So the thing is, it has to be me. It's the old covenant thinking is when you think you got to have a priest to pray for you. Come on, priest. Huh? Oh. See, now you got to get into the book. Old covenant, it says, I got to have a preacher to pray for me. Yep. Oh, when Jesus rent the veil in the temple and then was tore down between the holy of holies in the outer court, that meant that God tore down that the need for a priest was taken away. Yep. I can pray now, our Father. Which are in heaven. Hmm? Huh? Jesus also, I mean, Paul also writes in Hebrews 4 and 16, Let us come boldly before the throne of God, mm -hmm. that we might obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Mm -hmm. So we need to come boldly. The throne of God is accessible to me as it is well is accessible to you. Mm -hmm. And I said in my introduction, we must be the initiator because our faith is the measure of the answer of our healing and our deliverance Amen. and our relief and our needs and our Amen. desires being answered. Amen. Jesus never healed anyone without the victim or the loved one's faith being tested. Come on, preacher. Hmm? Never did. Huh? His, your miracle ain't coming if you ain't praying. And if you ain't calling on someone faithfully to pray for you, Amen. I don't mean that don't, 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 I ain't telling you not to have somebody to pray for you. Yeah. But the thing is, if you ain't praying, somebody got to be praying. Yeah, but the thing is, you must be the initiator. You need to call somebody to pray for you. My yeah. question is this morning, are you just waiting for your miracle? Are you just sitting around, ain't doing nothing? See, waiting don't mean doing what? He says, wait on the Lord. Huh? Wait on the Lord. Be a good cheer. Huh? Wait on the Lord. He wants you to do something. Wait on the Lord. Be part of it. So our text this morning, he puts the ownership on what? You and I. Our text says that if there is any afflicted among you, let him pray. If there is any merry among you, let him sing song. So that means that if I'm sick, I have the capacity to pray for myself. Yes. And if I'm happy, I got the capacity to celebrate myself. Yes. You can't celebrate for me. Mm -mm. So if you can't celebrate for me, how can you pray for me? Come on, pray. To satisfy. I'm just reading what the text says. All right. If all right. you are afflicted, let him pray. Yep. If you are married, let him sing song. So God got the ownership on you. Yeah. You've been to pray. See, I missed this so many years when I read, when I finally read it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't visit the sick, that you shouldn't call nobody to pray for you, but our prayers cannot function on their own. I told you Jesus never healed without somebody's participation. Come on. Don't lie around waiting for your miracle to happen and you ain't sent a request out yet. You won't you want the doctor to help you, but you won't go to the doctor. 
Huh? See, nobody around me. See, God knows the desire of your heart, but faith activates the request. Yes. Once it flows yes. off your lips, when yes. the word flows off your lips, that yes. activates the faith. So if you sit, don't call the pastor. Come on now. First. <laughs> Call Jesus, ain't it? Jesus. See, my prayer is not has no authority. Think about it. My prayer has no authority above your faith. Come on. I'ma pray for you to be healed, but you don't believe. Come on now. See, I gotta have your faith. See, am I clear about that? See, yes, you see, you and your representative must be the initiator. All right. See, if you're so sick that that your your parents take you to be prayed for, that, that they gotta believe their faith they believe. Know. So yes. somebody's faith. So let's let, let's look at the EV, the ESV. I like the English Standard Version. Yes. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. Mm -hmm. If anyone is cheerful, let him give the praise. Mm -hmm. That's simple. It's all about whether you are the initiator or not. Right. You need to be initiator. You, if you need to have a healing, you need to pray and ask God about it. Jesus said, thy faith has made you whole. Hello. So if, if, if you pray and ask God and you have the faith, but if you somebody else pray and ask God for your healing, that means that they yeah. have to believe the request. Yes. Somebody got to believe. Somebody. And, and you remember when the, old, the, the man 40 years old was healed and they asked the parents, the parents said he's 40 years old. Yeah, amen. And ask him. See, when the child, yes, you pray and you're under the authority, the child is under the authority mm -hmm. of your house. Yes. Your prayer is over that child. Yeah. But once you get to the oh, age, you're on your own. Yep. And that's what he said. That man, 40 years old, mm -hmm. he on his own. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to pray for yourself, ain't it? And then he says that what James is trying to get us to understand is that we need to respond to something joyful in our life. Just as well is we need to respond for those things that are painful in our Amen. life. If you are having joyful things in your life, ain't no thing I got to tell you to celebrate. No. Nope. But why is it that when you're suffering that somebody got to tell you to pray? Come on, preacher. He said just as you should celebrate, you should have the same desire to pray and ask God, ain't it? Amen. If anyone, I have the ownership to call upon the Lord myself in the time of my suffering. Mm -hmm. I got that ownership. In my time of sorrow, but also have that in my time of joy. Mm -hmm. God demands a response, ain't it? Whether you're suffering or whether you're joyful. If you're in pain, call upon him for help. If you're, 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 if you're uh, celebrating, give him praise and glory for what he's done in your life. Mm -hmm. See, waiting for someone to pray for you, uh, for your miracle or to celebrate, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You should celebrate when you have good joy in your heart. Yeah. But does you also pray when you have what? Some suffering in your life. Now James takes another level when he asks others to pray for us. He said mm -hmm. that if there is any sick among you, now y'all need to read this. Yeah. If is any sick among you, let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It didn't say heal the sick. Mm -mm. Shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Hey, what would you do if the preacher showed up at your house and you didn't ask? I, I, I've had that done. I, I've been told that I was a pastor of a church, and they said, you don't visit unless you, you got to send that message ahead of time. Mm -hmm. you know? But what would you do if the pastor just showed up at your house and you didn't ask? Mm -hmm. What does the preacher do if you haven't called him? Mm -hmm. hmm? Is it proper for to show up without being called? Mm -hmm. Did Jesus just show up uninvited? Mm -hmm. hmm? See, one text, say, he, he even met this man, and he said, you remember when he, he, he met the man that was up in the tree? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and he said, today I'll be at your house. He just didn't show up. Mm -hmm. he, he told him that he was going to come to his house. Mm -hmm. The tax collector. Yeah. He told him he was mm -hmm. going to come to his house. Jesus just didn't show up. 
See, our text says that some invitations are given by the initiator because of their faith that that's the catalyst of the miracle. See, God, some got to be the catalyst of the miracle. The catalyst of the miracle is the faith. Okay. You have to have the request being made, whether it's made by you or made by someone else. Mm -hmm. The catalyst is the faith. If the faith wasn't there, the healing, it doesn't matter who has. Yeah. It's the catalyst is the faith. If anyone is sick, he said, call the elders and they pray over you. They lay hands on you. They anoint you with oil, but only the prayer of faith does the healing. Yeah. It didn't say every prayer that was asked. Yeah. It says only the prayer yeah. of faith okay. does the healing. Now, I ask the question, why is that? Because some of us have such egos that if we said, I went into Brother so-and-so's house, I prayed over him. He went to the doctor the next day and God healed him. Mm -hmm. We think it was our prayer. Yes, yes. It's still the God doing the healing. Yeah. See, what it did is they got let the elders of the church come mm -hmm. and they gathered around him. All elders laid hands on him. All elders prayed, but only the prayer of faith. Never the text says that every elder had the prayer of faith. No. But that prayer, prayer of, faith, of faith, no one knew which prayer was the one. Yeah. No one could walk away with his ego with his chest stuck yeah. out. See, if you have it, if you if he hadn't had the prayer of faith, if he hadn't had faith that that been made the request, it doesn't matter who was praying, it didn't matter how many was praying, faith was the driver that caused the healing. Amen. Jesus told the father of the youngster, Jesus said, if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Sometimes our faith is not what it should be. And, and by praying for yourself, see, God will tap into your faith and help to help your faith to become stronger. He said, help my unbelief. Help my lack of faith that I have to accomplish what you've given to me accomplish. Everything that I need to do, I don't have faith to do it. But God, help my unbelief. Amen. So if you're afflicted and sorrowful, call upon the name of the Lord and, and in faith. And asking for a miracle. Remember, God always answers every prayer. Amen. Huh? The problem is that God doesn't always answer the prayer the way that you think that the prayer is to be answered. Answer. Huh? As in return, see, the problem is that God may not answer the way that we expect it to be answered. But in return... You get a miracle that can heal you, that can deliver you, that can set you free, that can release you, that can do something in your life. And then if you would only, what, believe. So I told you a few weeks ago, Paul prayed three times that God would heal him. But the request came in a different way, didn't it? Yep. God said that my grace is sufficient. I will not heal you, but I will give you the grace to handle it. See, what God does sometimes, he doesn't take the problem away. He gives you the strength to handle it. Amen. See, God has a knack of sometimes mm -hmm. turning things around. Thank our God. healing and deliverance must be in alignment, the will that he has for our lives. Why wait when you can pray? Come on. Why wait on your miracle when you can ask God? Old folks said prayer is the key, but what? Faith is the one that unlocks yeah. the door. See, praying without believing is weak as believing without praying. Yeah. Praying without believing is just as weak as believing without praying. Come on. So we lose out on our opportunity of tapping into the resource that God has for us. Our faith on call to be able to help somebody. Our faith to call for help is the big thing that we need to understand. Our initiating the call is so important. We lose out on tapping into the resources that God has in store for us just because we don't tap into his power and authority that he has for our lives by asking, initiating the call for help. Mm -hmm. huh? So my question today is, are you initiating the call or are you just waiting? Do y'all understand? Mm -hmm. Are you waiting or are you initiating the call? Finally, as we close, our miracle depends on our relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. Our text says what? Confess your sins one to another. What's that got to do with my healing? Yes. 
Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that ye may be what? Healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that veil as much. See, see, we, we allow our feelings for one another sometimes to get in the way of our miracle. Mm -hmm. and, and our relationship with God as well as our relationship with one another mm -hmm. is the root of our blessings and, and, and or not being blessed. We, why didn't you get your blessings? It's the way you treat folk. The way you treat God. The way you treat folk. Mm -hmm. Why does why God going to give you a blessing if you're not going to use it to help somebody or to do good? Huh? See, we allow that to become a block to our blessings. See, I was reading Friday morning and, and, and about the disciples, the sign of how we identified as a believer. And listen to what he said. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. And that ye shall also love one another. But this shall men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. See, our identifier of being a believer is us loving one another. You can say you're saved. You can say you're a Christian. You're baptized. Holy Ghost, still fire, baptized. If you can't love one another, you got some problems. Yep. Our signature, our sign of being a distinguished member or follower of Jesus Christ is yep. us loving one another. Yep. James is trying uh, uh, tying our healing to the same condition. Our healing is tied to us loving one another. Yep. He said, be transparent to one another. Pray for one another. Mm -hmm. And then we can get tapped into the healing power that God has for us. Yeah. That sounds uh, rather simple, but 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 getting self out of the way is Come not on. a simple task. You need to be transparent, get yourself out of the way. Come it's on. not easy, but James is telling us that it's necessary for us to have the miracle to happen in our life. Get yourself out the way, opening up so that others can be able to have a help in your life. God bless you with so much so that you can be able to help to somebody else. Amen. Taking the other, uh, talking to other believers about our challenges is big too. Don't keep your testimony to yourself. God brought you through so that you can have a testimony to tell somebody else that they too can get through. Amen. Do you know how much weight you took off of somebody else's shoulders with your confession that you made. Your confession became this individual's healing process. Your testimony let them know that if God can heal you, he can heal them too. They thought that they were, were, were out of the healing range of God. They thought that they were over and never be able to heal. But your testimony yeah. became a profession to them that God is able to heal. They thought that they were supermen. But when the confession of your personal weakness, it opened up conversation. See, Amen. some folks think they all that. Come but on, when man. you tell them about your challenges See? and your struggles, they too now feel like now they can open up. Amen. Then James says that the power of our healing is founded on the simple act of submission. Thank you, Lord. Confession, supplication, and faith. See, God wants to bless us. In every area of our life. Mm -hmm. But 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 we're the catalyst behind all of those blessings. Mm -hmm. The when, the where, the why, and the how. How those things going to wait. Waiting does not mean doing nothing. I told you that early. Does Doing nothing is not waiting, is it? Mm -hmm. Doing nothing is doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, our miracle must have some feet. Oh, I like yeah. my brother-in-law, Dr. Arthur Holmes. He said, you got to put some legs on your faith. We got to get some feet on your faith. We got to put legs on our faith. So it's important as to resist doubt. Faith alone won't get you the whole job done. You just can't sit around believing on the inside and doing nothing on the outside. Come on, now, come faith got to come alive. You got to put legs on yeah. it again. And then you got to come alive and you have to get some action in your life. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for your miracle today, don't just sit there. Take some action. Get involved. As we close, Jane reminds us that mutual confession and prayer brings healing both in your physical and your spiritual body. Confession can free us from the heavy burden that, that life brings on us both physically 
and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a heavy burden on you in your heart and mind were all messed up? Then you start feeling sick. Mm -hmm. The mind and the body works together, folks. Right, you you got to be able to help your mind and your body by getting this stuff off you. Right. Confess some stuff. You'll be able to breathe better. Mm -hmm. Confess some stuff. You'll be able to see better. Yeah. Confess some stuff. You might be able to live better. Confess some stuff and get it off your heart. See, yeah. there's some unresolved sin that all of us got. We need to remove those hindrances so that the Holy Spirit can work inside yes, of us. So. See, so many people are looking for the miracle today, but they don't know how to receive it. Huh? And you know what they said? You know what the Clark sister said? You got to learn how to receive it today. Come Get on. your miracle today. God got a miracle with your name on it. And not like what Moses said, you need to stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. So I'm asking you this morning, if you're looking for your miracle, stand still and be able to see your miracle come true. No matter what your problem is, if you stand still long enough and wait on the Lord, I believe everything is going to be all right. However, once you receive it, God must get the praise. He must get the praise of the Lord and the honor for what he has done for your life. As I told you earlier, I'm not just sitting around waiting for my miracle. I'm looking and I'm expecting I'm like the talk sisters. I'm feeling my blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. The unlimited miracle that God got for me, I'm seeing it there with my name on it. Do you yeah. see? Huh? I can have that. what God has for me, and he'll perform it in my life if I can only believe it. He says, if you believe it, he can achieve it. Mm -hmm. But God cannot achieve the greatness that he has in store for your life if you don't believe it today. Yeah. So it's your faith. It's the faith of the initiator. That, that they can believe that God is able. Mm -hmm. And if you believe God is able to do things that are impossible, what's impossible to man is possible, possible to God. So I'm seeing it today. So my last question is, are you merely sitting around waiting for your miracle? Or are you becoming an initiator? Are you becoming a participant? I'm asking God. I'm getting involved. So look, I'm going to go ask you. I'm going to ask God. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask anybody. That if I, if you can help me in any way, come help me. I need help. I need help. And only God can do it. But God can do it through sending somebody like you. God can send another man into my life, into your life, to be able to help you in your time of need. Yes, God does the healing. But God does healing by our request. Yes. Or by the request of one loved one. Send the request out today. Mm -hmm. You have not because you ask no. So are you waiting for your miracle? Get up and do something about it. Get involved. Ask God. Huh? Get involved. Become a, a lover. Love your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, asking God without love, that's another no-no, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Don't ask God for that you don't have the love of your fellow man in your heart. Once you get the love of God in your heart, everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. Are you waiting for your miracle? Don't sit around and wait. Mm -hmm. Get involved. Initiate mm -hmm. that. That, that, that process by praying and asking God. If you're sick, pray. If you're, you're afflicted, pray. He said that if, if you are, are joyful, huh, give him some praise right now. Huh? Mm -hmm. God is good. Yeah. God bless yeah. you. We have a smile upon you. We're so thankful for you joining us this morning. Hopefully we have said some things that will help you, strengthen mm -hmm. you in your spiritual walk, be able to help you through the challenges of this life. But if you are looking for a miracle, huh, you need to Get involved. Get, mm -hmm. get, get, become the initiator. Mm -hmm. Allow the process of faith to work mm -hmm. that will heal you from everything that you're going through. Call upon the name of Jesus. He is able. Amen. We thank you so much. This is our Father God. We do thank you, Lord, this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And as we come and as we depart from this place, we pray, Lord, that you would give us traveling mercies over the highways and byways. Lord, we pray that you would just touch in a mighty way. Every believer, everyone that do not know you in the pardon of their sin, touch their hearts that they might turn back to you. Bless us in our time of weakness, in our time of sickness. Lord, just touch in a mighty way. Lord, we're asking you right now. We're praying that you will heal the diseases in my body, the illness and the sickness in my body, seal my mind, my body, and my soul. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. We'll see you again on 
on Friday evening at our Bible Institute hour, on Sunday morning at our Sunday school hour. Continue to pray for the body of Christ, and we'll pray for you. God bless you. Amen.